Hey VC, how's it going? I'm finally here with my top 10, it's gonna be 10 this year, uh, top 10 record finds of 2019. Last year I think I did five, because um, I don't really know why, I think I could really um, only pick out five, but I got 10 this year, and uh, just, yeah, gonna get right into it. Um, oh, actually before I get into it, a um, couple qualifiers, these were all found in person, um, you know, actually in a record store, in a in some place with records, and um, you know, I pick these up with my hand and buy them then and there. Um, internet buying is cool, but um, I don't know, there's something to be said about the experience of um, going to a record store, supporting a record store, and um, getting some cool music, that instant gratification. Um, so first one here I found at, uh, actually like five of these, I got at Half Price Books, um, which is a, a big way I get a lot of records. Um, for good prices whenever I find good deals I um, it's hard to say no I got a great deal on shotgun Willie Willie Nelson um, pretty well regarded as like arguably his best record it's definitely um, in that period where he was kind of doing no wrong that sort of uh, early to mid 70s into the later 70s um, you know this one actually has my favorite uh, Willie Nelson song Whiskey River um, he also does a great version of A Song For You by Leon Russell, which is fantastic. I've also been getting more into Leon Russell. It is on the Atlantic label, the kind of, you know, standard 70s one. Um, yeah, just a really solid find. I think that was like four or five bucks. Um, actually, the same day at the same store is when I found uh, this one, Lucifer's Friend, self-titled. This is a German press from, uh, I want to say... Oh geez, I want to say 69, 69 or 70, something like that, but it's German, it's on the blue Phillips label. Um, for the two of them, I think I paid like 15, so I'd make this like 10 bucks. Um, the cover's not in the greatest shape, it's got uh, tape all along the spine there. Um, the spine is completely illegible, and uh, you know, the rest of the cover just has like some, some ring wear, but it's pretty cool. Um, kind of a weird thing to find in the middle of Texas. Um, I'm not complaining though. That's really awesome find. Uh, this is one I've actually been looking for for a long time. I had their second and third one, um, but I never was able to find a clean copy of their first one until recently. This is the Electric Prunes. Um, I had too much to dream last night. Actually, I think this might be self-titled. Featuring the song I had too much to dream last night and uh, Get Me to the World on Time. Uh, name on the back, thanks to Gene. This is a mono copy on the um, tricolor uh, reprise label, mono. Uh, everybody knows that song, I Had Too Much Dream Last Night. And again, same store, uh, Antique Mall. I found this Sir Lord Baltimore first pressing. Um, Unipack, cool gatefold. There's, you know, the Unipack is in there. Um, really awesome cover art. Love that image. And uh, here's the record. Red Mercury label. Very clean. Very nice. Got a good deal. Here's another one I had been uh, searching for a good copy at an affordable price. I uh, really lucked out finding this in person. I found this in Austin this year. Uh, this is a replacements. Let it be. Probably everybody's favorite replacements record, or <laughs> of course someone's um, gonna disagree with that. Um, probably their most well-known, um, kind of their their breakthrough, I would say. Um, it had some writing on the front that I, uh, for the longest time, had uh, left there. I finally got it off. It looks great. You can't even tell it was there. It, you know, it's lucky that it was. This is kind of a laminated-ish um, sort of cover. Uh, but this one has actually come down in price. This used to be like a, easily like a hundred dollar record, hundred and twenty um, dollar record for a while there. Finally got repressed. They finally put it out in a box set and everything. Um, but I got this one for twenty five bucks, so that was awesome. Um, also from Austin, Texas. This one I picked up at the uh, Austin Record Show. This I think it was in the summer. Um, I think I overpaid for this one a little bit. Still really cool. Uh, probably my favorite. Uh, or one of my favorite psych albums in my collection now. This is Auto Salvage, self-titled. Um, kind of notable for um, 
you know, uh, I think they toured with uh, Zappa and the Mothers. He really enjoyed them. Um, their song, Auto Salvage, is a um, really awesome song. That's a good intro to the band. Um, that is a uh, mono copy as well. I don't know if I really got a good look at that, but uh, right there, mono. Pretty cool. Um, I just picked this up last month, so I just showed this in my last video. Um, this is Townsend Zant for the sake of the song. Original pressing, uh, it's got a cutout hole, it's on Poppy Records. There's the label. Uh, solid VG, um, plays great. You know, this this one has a little more um, production value behind it or, or, or studio. It's, it's, what am I trying to say? It's less of like a, like a live kind of sound that um, a lot of his albums are, are, they really capture the live sound pretty well, even though they're studio records. But this one has a lot more production behind it. Um, a couple of the same songs uh, from those albums are on this one too. Uh, you know, like Waiting Around to Die is on his self-titled, stuff like that. So I'd like to find more um, just because they have different versions of some of his songs. Um, but this is a cool one nonetheless. And some of you may remember this one. This is uh, the band Coven album, Witchcraft Destroys Minds and, sorry, yeah, Destroys Minds and Reaps Souls. Um, another uni pack. You can see the, the black mass there. Lyrics, uni pack is in there. And the back cover. Um, so yeah, this, I think I talked about this in the video I showed it in. Um, sort of like a band record. Um, sort of hard to find now because of that. It didn't sell very well in the first place. And then um, they pulled it from shelves after, you know, like the, the Manson killings and um, all that satanic panic that was happening. Um, but, you know, they they have a, um, what do you call it? Like a, like a Black Sabbath. A satanic mass um as looks like a it's almost like a halloween record um with you know it's like spoken word and uh sound effects and uh stuff like that um you know finishing off the album like the last 15 minutes of the record or that and uh it's it's interesting for the novelty and um i definitely would not have paid you know full internet price for this so getting it for a deal was cool and uh the rest of the music is sort of um not pop but Kind of, kind of a bit pop, honestly. Uh, something a little bit cooler, in my opinion. Sacred Mushroom, self-titled, first and only U.S. press. I just got this again last month at Doc's Records. You can find it in my last video. Um, they had this marked at twenty. This is um, probably worth at least, I will say, double or triple that in this condition. Um, again, more of a, a VG. Plays fine. Covers um, totally you know, trash though. Um, the artwork isn't cool, is, uh, intact, which is cool. Um, what was I saying? Uh, blues. You would think it'd be more psych. Pretty straightforward blues, almost like a cream or, a, um, even like Blind Faith or Derek and the Dominoes type thing. Um, still really cool for such a, um, I guess you could call them a small band, uh, less well-known band. Another, um, less well-known thing that was uh, severely underpriced was this Parish Hall. I can't remember if it was November or December I found this. Um, another half price book thing, they had it marked at 10 bucks. Some of you that follow me on Instagram may have seen it. Um, another kind of uh, hard rock, there's the label, Blue Fantasy. Um, hard rock type thing, three piece band, really great guitar playing. Um, another kind of rarity. And finishing it off, my best find of the year by far, um, by any metric too, um, amount I've played it, um, happiness it's brought me, um, price I paid and value considering all those things. Um, definitely, you know, the living legend, the baby Huey story. Um, so this is a posthumous release because he was able to finish half of this record before passing away. Um, you know, it was like a lot of things. I think he had like a, it, it probably says in the, in the liner notes somewhere of how he died. Uh, I believe it was, um, complications due to a drug overdose. Um, 
and you know his heart was not in a great condition anyway uh, he was not in excellent health but damn was he a good musician um, he does a killer killer version of change is gonna come um, I've even I was a little hard on on some of the tracks on here that he doesn't feature on there's a couple instrumentals um, but even those I've really warmed up to this is just a solid solid album front to back it's just a, a real shame that he didn't get to record a full record um that would have been really awesome but yeah baby huey's story original on the Curtom label um again another it's probably about a vg but i paid 50 cents for this at a, at a thrift stop or a thrift shop so um you, you honestly can't get a better uh, deal than that um so yeah, a lot of those, um, really good value. Um, it, it was really cool this year. You know, I had, um, you look on Discogs and you can sort by, um, value or by median price. And, um, a lot of those, like the Baby Huey, the Parish Hall, uh, Witchcraft, um, a lot of those, like the Sir Lord Baltimore, um, it's really cool seeing a bunch of records I just recently bought, um, just sitting comfortably in like the top 20, um couple of those like the top 10 like this baby Huey is um easily the most valuable thing in my collection now which is kind of crazy um for 50 cents especially so I would have ended up buying a repress of that eventually but um hey I'll take an original and you know maybe one day I'll up be able to upgrade and pass on a good copy to someone else so that is my top 10 for this year always really fun to make this I hope to see you guys in the next video take care